It's time for a Cattleya update. Apart from showing some blooms, I'll talk about my simplified care routine, I have some new insights into my thrips problem and in the end of the video I'll show you my latest acquisition, an exquisite Cattleya that I'm so delighted to finally have gotten hold of. But before we get into the video, I'd like to quickly draw your attention to our app. Please check out our iPhone application called Orchid Collection to keep track of your orchids. Link in the description box. Now let's get started. Most of my cattleyas are organized sitting in trays now. Most of them have always been in trays, but now I've gotten rid of most of the decorative pots as well. And they are sitting together in the trays. And this has something to do with my simplified care routine, which consists of bottom watering. You could call it top watering just as well. Most cattleyas are able to soak up water from the bottom of the tray. But sometimes I let it run through the pot so that some of the roots get in touch with the water to moisten them and make it a bit easier for them to soak it up fast. It's an extremely time-saving way of watering. One downside I see though is that some cattleyas tend to let their roots grow into the tray and fasten themselves. That would not happen if I would soak them separately, because the roots would break off sooner or later when I'm handling the plant. I want to clean the plant, so I'll try to detach them from the tray if possible. Here's my BC yellow bird. It suffered from severe cold damage last year, but apart from some leafless pseudobulbs, everything is absolutely fine now. I love the star-shaped flowers so much. They bring me so much joy. I fear at some point I'll have to repot the BC yellow bird too, but I'm putting it off as always. I always try to avoid pronouncing the next one. It's Gyariantha orantiaca crossed with Lelia milleri and even more complicated for me to pronounce. It's Catliantha Rojo or something like that. Sorry if I butchered this name. I absolutely can't roll the R. This is a happy droop. This is a happy <laughs> drooper. <laughs> trooper. It has a nice upright growth habit and is going to bloom in spring from the sheaths of the two pseudobulbs it produced this year. I think it's a trait it inherited from Giorgiantha orangiaca if I'm not mistaken. It has a pretty nice root system and has managed to stay in its spot for a remarkable while now. So far most of the new growths didn't appear right at the edge of the pot so that they would hang over, but somewhat towards the center of the pot. Cattleya forbesii, or is it forbesii? I don't know. I can't remove this one from the tray, so it's being showered with its tray on. It has a really pretty growth habit in my eyes, a bit unruly, but still nice. I like the bifoliate growths with their nice proportions. The last growth stayed unifoliate and is really small. I don't really remember why. I think it appeared in November or so when it was getting darker and darker. If you ask me, it could put a little more effort into filling its pot with roots instead of letting the roots grow out of it. And here's my Bresocatlia Maikai. Usually it opens its blooms around Christmas time, but this year it was 12 days early. It's another one that is due for repotting. It has far less flowers compared to the years before and has consumed a few pseudobulbs in the middle of the pot, so I might even divide it. Here's the next tray and here it's the left one that cannot be removed from the tray today. By the way, all cattleyas in trays occupy pole positions on my window sills. The windows are south facing and they are in the front row. This is my backup Lelio cattleya, a division of my very big yellow No ID LC. It has become nice and big, but this hybrid has kind of a shallow root system, which makes it a bit more difficult for the plant to soak up water from the bottom of the tray. Two of you pointed out that it might be Potinara free spirit and I think that's at least very close. So thank you again very much for letting me know. I call this one my chai for obvious reasons. You wouldn't expect Lelia purpurata to be one of its parent species, wouldn't you? The growth habit has nothing Lelia purpurata like. I have no idea why it hasn't bloomed a second time for me because it has produced so many mature new growths. 
The root system could be a bit better, yes, could be worse. I'm not exactly sure what's the problem, but I wish it would bloom again, because the blooms were absolutely breathtaking. And the last one on this tray is the one that I cannot remove. It's still in the pot it came with three years ago, but look how much space it's taking in with its creeping growth habit. It has such a good place and it's growing well, but it hasn't bloomed in a while too, although the growths are nice and strong. And it has a second direction of growth. What's the problem here? This is the mother plant of the backup Leucathlea. It's quite dusty and was showered after I had filmed this clip. It's a quite reliable bloomer. Not all the growths form buds, maybe 50% of them. But since it's growing so vigorously, I can enjoy its flowers on a regular basis. The root system has never looked better than today, and it looks quite poor. I've considered repotting it, but I fear it would do more harm than good, so I'll wait until there's a real need. The next one is my big RLC. I don't know if you can see how big it is, but it's my biggest cattleya. The blooms have lasted for 5 weeks at this point, and about 6 weeks in total. Their heavy, sweet, perfumey scent, like an old lady's rose perfume, is quite powerful. And I love the texture of the blooms. The egg yolky yellow in the lip. And how sepals and petals are sparkling in the sun. There's something wrong with this plant though. The new growths don't become as strong as I want them to. Sometimes the leaves form too early. The pseudobulbs stay underdeveloped. You see, there are some cattleyas that do perform well, but not perfectly. There's something odd, but I can't quite put my finger on it. I'm wondering if thrips could have something to do with it, but I haven't seen any thrips damage lately, on this windowsill at least. Here's the next tray that is located in another room that contains a few houseplants as well. It's in another area of the house. I tend to slightly neglect these plants, so let me clean them really quick. Here we are. This is Recara Francis Fox, which is growing really nicely. Look at the healthy new growth. I've seen much weaker plants bloom on the internet and again, this one has a bright spot on the south facing windowsill. So what's the deal? I thought it might be time for some further investigations. And look what I found. A mature thrips deep down in between the leaves. So I do still have a thrips infestation after I had tried to treat them in the summer with an oil-based solution and neem stock. I haven't seen any thrips in months. Maybe it has reduced the population, but the visible population was small anyway and could have been reduced by just showering the plants. I've examined my plants really closely, multiple times with a magnifying glass daytime and nighttime over the course of the year and I've only found about maybe 10 to 20 alive thrips at max. Of course, there will be more in the soil in the medium, but I'm quite surprised that such a small population might be able to cause such severe symptoms, like lack of blooms despite good growth, or lack of good growth like in my RLC that you have seen before. That is, if thrips are responsible for those irregularities, which I don't know, and I can never be sure of. That's quite frustrating. Okay, over to the next plants. This is my Epidendrum ciliar, a small variety which is quite resilient. It's doing okay despite neglect and possible thrips attacks. And this is my Catlaitonia, I think, with a very Bratonia-like growth habit. And I'd be extremely thankful if anyone had any tips for me concerning its culture. It's been growing like crazy since I got it two years ago in a really bad medium. But the growths stay so small and don't bloom. So what does this plant need? I've been thinking about giving it to someone else, but I really want to see and smell the bloom since it's supposed to be fragrant. Can anyone help? The last one on this tray is Iwanagara Apple Blossom Pink. It's not the one I've reported recently. This one I got about a year ago and it came in a very poor condition. When I repotted it I noticed that it wasn't one plant but two very small divisions with two or maybe one and a half pseudobulbs each, something like that. 
It has grown quite a bit. The root system is okay, even if we can't see much of it here. No blooms yet, but I'm not sure if it's even blooming size yet. And this one is the Iwanagara I've reported recently after one year of preventative quarantine. I will link the video in the upper right corner of the screen in case you're interested in a simple reporting. And before we go to the last tray with Miss Orchid Girl Danny's divisions, here's my SLC jewel. I've received this one about a year ago at our Christmas raffle and it came with a really creepy and crappy root system. Crawlers everywhere. I cut almost everything. And since then it has developed a completely new root system. Yes, I know I should remove the mother of thousand plantlets before they grow even bigger. It has two nice sheets and I've seen some shadows so I hope to see some blooms soon. And last but not least my recovering tray under my new grow lights. I would like to update you on Miss Orchid Girl Danny's plants that I've received from her in April. This one was a back division of her plant and it came without roots. Now it has a decent root system, it bloomed with a mutated but still fragrant and long lasting bloom from a tiny new growth and now it's working on a second new growth. I'm really happy with it. The next one is another one that I've swapped with Denny. It's an extremely pretty hybrid with beige to yellow blooms. It came with quite a few good roots but I think the plant let them die and grew some new ones. It has made two new growths since I've received it and the large one at the front is the newest one. Also from Danny is Brassavola Little Stars. It has some short roots, has grown one little new growth and some nice roots. Also recovering my LC Siamese Doll Kiwi that I got in Dresden in March last year. I keep saying this year but it's last year. There were two separate orchids in the pot, I kept the stronger one. And the root system was basically dead, but it recovered quite nicely. And here's a more recent acquisition with a complicated name that has just started to grow new roots, but it's still quite weak. And now my most recent acquisition, an LC CG Reveling. It's such a pretty plant, don't you think? I was spoiled for choice, but chose this one because of its upright growth habit. The other ones had bloomed before, this one hasn't though. It's not the sentinel clone that you might know from Rachel's videos. It's a blue clone. Please keep your fingers crossed that it will like its new home. Okay, I think that's it for today. Please let me know in case you have any tips concerning my Brotonia hybrid or thoughts on my thrip situation or other problems I've mentioned. If you have come that far, I would really appreciate if you supported me by sharing my video with someone who might be interested on Facebook or elsewhere on social media. I'm wishing you a happy and healthy new year 2020. Happy growing to all of you. Bye bye.